Amen. Amen. I welcome everyone tonight in Jesus' name. I pray that the Lord will open our eyes of understanding to behold, to see, perceive and understand wondrous things out of the world in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, we well, thank you for the faithfulness of your church, faithfulness of the leaders, the faithfulness of your servants. We're asking, O oh Lord, as we faithfully come expecting to receive from you, so we can do the work of God more effectively. We pray, Lord, you bless every life in Jesus' name. Move every one of us forward in our understanding, in, our, in the impartation and in the effectiveness for ministry in Jesus' name. Touch us that we may touch others. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. Again, we come to our leadership development meeting tonight. And we're looking at Matthew chapter 8. As well as Matthew chapter 9 We we'll see the healing ministry of Jesus Christ And that's why tonight we are considering the message Wholesome healing through faith in Christ Wholesome healing That means healing for the whole man Man is not just body Man consists of body, soul and spirit and actually the most important part the spirit the heart next to that is the soul and next to that is the body but the body is very important because without the body the spirit cannot express itself our yearning our desires our motives and our drive our ambition anything we have on the inside cannot be expressed without the body it takes the eyes to see the ears to hear the hands to touch and handle and the feet to walk and those are members of the body that will express what the spirit wants to carry out and in the soul the soul is what we have that gets in touch with the world we cannot relate with the world we cannot feel joy we cannot feel happiness and we cannot have any relationship with another human being here on earth without the soul when the soul is cast down that soul it's healing and now the body itself if the body is sick if the body is weak if the body is down whatever you have on the inside you cannot communicate with your world that's the reason why we're constrained tonight not just the healing for the body the healing for the body the healing for the soul and the healing for the spirit and that we refer to as wholesome wholesome healing and it is through faith in Christ let's look at Matthew chapter 8 verse 7 and Jesus says unto him I will come and heal him whatever the level of sickness whatever the pain and the plague of the disease I will come and heal him look at verse 16 in verse 16 it says when the evening was come they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils many that were possessed with devils and he cast out the spirit with his word he cast out the spirit not with his hand there are people when they pray for the sick they have to do it one by one by one but Jesus did it in mass that means all those people that were brought to him that were possessed with the devil he cast out the spirits with his word just one word he spoke the word and all the evil spirits tormenting those people and mass and mass they were all healed and then it says and healed all that were sick healed all that was sick that's what we refer to as en mass healing 
he stands there and he saw all those people, many of them in their multitude, and he spoke just a word and healed them. And it's in fulfillment of prophecy. Look at verse 17. In verse 17, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet which was spoken by the prophet everything spoken by the prophet will be fulfilled and so when we're ministering to the sick we don't have any doubt and we're not thinking i've not done this i've not done that all we need to find out has each been spoken by the prophet then we know it's going to be fulfilled. It's the same prophet that said, a virgin shall conceive and be a child. It was spoken by the prophet. It was done. It's the same prophet that said, a child is born. Unto us a son is given. It was spoken by the prophet and it was done. And so the same way, what had been spoken by the prophet that himself took our infirmities and bear our sicknesses must be fulfilled all you need to find out all i need to find out is a seed be spoken by the prophet and when the answer is yes then we can expect an answer everything that is spoken in the word of god will be fulfilled in your life Look at chapter 9, chapter 9, reading from verse 12. It tells us, it says, But when Jesus had that, he said unto them, They that behold need not a physician, but they that are sick. And then in verse 13, it says, But go ye and learn what that means. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. That tells us the difference between the new covenant and the old covenant. Whenever a plague broke out in Israel, Moses will tell Aaron, Go very quickly, make sacrifice, feel the censer do this so that they can be healed but now it's on the basis of mercy on the basis of compassion because it is no more that you know you have to make sacrifice you have to do this and do that he said i will have mercy and not sacrifice for i am not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance look at verse 17 in verse 17 it says neither do men put new wine into old bottles else the bottles will break and the wine runneth out but and the bottles perish they, they had um, skin bottles those days and uh, when uh, those bottles are old and the, and the wine was new it will begin to ferment and expand and because the bottle is hardened already it will break and he gave that as an illustration a parable for the old covenant and now this is new covenant and what we need now the new wine of the spirit that comes into us he renews our body so that the body is not old it's not decayed it's not sickly it's not disease it's renewed if the spirit that raised up jesus christ from the dead dwell in your mortal body that spirit will quicken your mortal body so that your body will now be renewed and then your body will not decay your body will not perish but they put new wine into new bottles new wine into new bottles look at those apostles can i tell you all those apostles all the time that christ was with them they were not sick have you noticed that all these people that were sick centurion he came from outside and then you find the leper he came from outside all those people that had all those sicknesses and then they said they carried them many of them multitudes they were from outside the people inside living with christ the healer christ the redeemer christ the savior they remained healthy they remained sound new bottle 
new body. And with that new body, you put a new vision, a new vision that will drive them, a new vision. They are able to run and they were not tired. So he said, they put new wine into new bottles and both are preserved. And as the new vision comes to you, your life will be preserved. And as the new power comes to you, your life will be preserved in Jesus' name. It says in verse 28, in verse 28, it tells us, And when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus says unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this. They said unto him, Ye Lord, you see, they didn't have to, you know, go through a long process. We're blind. We want to see. They were in the presence of Christ. When you come to the presence of Christ and you connect by faith, do you believe I'm able to do this? And then you say, yes, Lord, immediately there'll be an explosion of miracle in your life. And then it says in verse 29, and then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. What? Look at those blind people. According to your faith, be it unto you. Is that not the reason why many people today are not getting what they are asking for? Because they have unbelief. And according to their unbelief, it is unto them. They have doubts. According to their doubts, it is unto them. And they have misunderstanding of the promise of God. And according to their misunderstanding, it is unto them. Faith will never fail. And if you have faith in your heart and thank God, there's the house of faith. This is a meeting of faith. This is a congregation of faith. And as you have faith in your heart, the problem is solved. Let me hear an amen that shows your faith. By the grace of God, according to your faith, be each unto you. Look at this. Those people, blind men, didn't have eyes to read the Bible. And they have faith. I have eyes to read the Bible. You must have faith. Those people did not have, you know, like a church, deeper life. They didn't even have the normal life, Christian ministry. Not to talk of having deeper life, Christian ministry. But now, these blind people, Jesus said, I see that you have not been to synagogue. You have not read the Bible. You have not met the priest. You have not met anybody. And you have not discussed with anyone do you believe, since you have not gone here and there, to, you, they've not read any tract, they've not listened to any radio message, they've not seen any television, they've not seen anything, any act of God with your blindness. Do you believe that I can do this? What did they say? They said, yes, Lord. That makes me to say, there are people that have eyesight, but they don't have understanding. They don't have perception. There are people that don't have eyesight, they have insight. And because they have insight, they are insight. The inner vision and the inner understanding goes beyond their eyesight. They have that inner eye that can see and connect to the Almighty. And once you have that insight, your problems are solved. And so he said, according to your faith, be it unto you. Look at verse 30 there. In verse 30 it says, and their eyes were opened. And their eyes were opened. And your eyes will be opened. And once your eyes are opened, you see what the Lord has provided for you. You will never be the same again. I will never be the same again. I will see the Lord. I will see what he has done for me. I will see what Calvary has provided. And because I see that, it shall be mine, it shall be yours in Jesus' name. Look at verse 35. Verse 35 tells us the threefold ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages. Number one, 
teaching in their synagogues teaching in their synagogues you know when we teach we have to unravel we have to undo we have to take away all the traditions that blindfold people, all the things the people by tradition that they believe before. That's why it is necessary for us. There is teaching, teaching in their synagogues. Number two, preaching the gospel of the kingdom. We have to preach, we have to exhort, and we have to demonstrate that this is the king. And we have to, it is the explanation, the exhortation, it is the proclamation to tell them there is a government in the world. But this one, there's a government from heaven. And the government of the world, they have their constitution, they have their word. And if anyone walks according to the constitution of the government of the world, everything that is promised in that constitution is done. The same thing now you come to the kingdom of heaven, this one is coming from heaven, and the king has ordained that this is what will be done. Anyone who comes, anyone who comes will have salvation, anyone who comes will have healing anyone who comes will have deliverance and if the government of the world the kingdom of the world the kingdom on earth if they are able to do what they have said they will do in their constitution then uh, the constitution of heaven that's the bible right here every judge every title in this our bible will be fulfilled in your life and so there is teaching number two there is preaching and then number three and healing every sickness cancer no exception every sickness it shall be not exception every sickness what they call incurable disease there's no exception every sickness and every disease among the people among the people and among our people healing among our people deliverance because the word of the kingdom must be fulfilled, will be fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. Let's very quickly look at three things. Number one is the prophesied healing for the sick body. Number two is the precious healing of the sorrowful soul. Number three is the priceless healing of smitten spirits. Let's look at number one. Number one, the prophesied healing of the sick body. If you look at Isaiah chapter 53, reading there from verse 4, it says, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Look at verse, look at verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, and with his stripes, and with his stripes, where well, he'll understand the prophecy. The prophecy means God looked at all the sicknesses in the world, all the diseases in the world. He also looked at all the sin in the world. And for sin, the Almighty God said, I'm going to put all the iniquities of the people of the world upon my only begotten son, so that whosoever will call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Then, on the other hand, I'm going to put all the sicknesses and diseases of the world, the consequence of sin. If you bear the sin, so they will not sin anymore, so that the judgment of sin will not be upon them. I'm going to also erase, I'm going to take away the consequence of sin, the punishment for sin, which is sickness. And then he says, I will allow you to be weak, to have stripes. And all those stripes, the dying on the cross, will take away the sin. And the stripes will take away the sickness. With the stripes, we are healed. 
That's the prophecy. It must be fulfilled. In your life, it must be fulfilled. In your ministry, as you pray for people, you know, you understand? It is not your fasting. Fasting is good. Don't misunderstand me. But it is not your fasting that will heal the sick. What does fasting do? Fasting clears your mind of your doubts, of your unbelief. The fasting actually works on you, not on God. But it is the stride of Christ that will take away the sickness. And your crying cannot be stronger than the stripes of Jesus. Your rolling on the ground cannot be stronger than the stripes of Jesus. And whatever you do, you punish yourself, whatever it is, that cannot be stronger than the stripes of Christ. And it says, with his stripes. Thank God you are healed. Three things. Number one, promised healing for the sick body. Number two, personal humility of supplicating believers. Number three, purposeful healing of sound bodies. We're looking at number one there. It's the promised healing for sick bodies. Already we have read uh, Matthew chapter 8 and uh, verse 7. Let's look at that again. Matthew chapter 8 and verse 7. It said, Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. What did he ask? What's your name? Which church do you go? Which synagogue you identify with? Why are you just coming now? What's the origin of the problem? He couldn't ask that because he had been raised up to heal everyone. Anyone who comes, anyone who comes is coming like a centurion, is coming like a gentile, is coming like a Jew. Anyone who comes because he has been raised up. That's why he came. Just like any sinner that comes is not going to ask, how long have you been sinning? And what is the origin of your sin? How habitual it is? How terrible? It, it doesn't ask that question. Every sinner who comes, he says, and every sick person who comes, he delivers. He says, I will come and heal him. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, it says, And the centurion answered, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only. Speak the word only. Why? Why did he say that? Every sickness has a spirit behind it. Every infirmity has, you might call it a demon, behind it. Has an origin. And that origin and that source of that sickness can hear. And once he hears that and that source and that origin and that cause of the sickness gets away, he will pack his load and go. Yeah. And so whatever sickness anybody has, cancer has root. Cancer has something behind it that is uh, causing that thing to eat up the good cells of the body. And when uh, that word is spoken and it says cancer, pack your load and go. It will go. I said it will go. And so the Saturn said, you don't have to come to my house. You can speak the word. And if you speak the word here, and then at home, my servant will be healed. Your servant will be healed. Your wife will be healed. And we don't have to, you know, carry her. We don't have to carry him. We don't have to say, you know, want to see this and this. When we speak here tonight, to that sickness, anywhere it is, they are healed. And you yourself, as you are here, you are at the very place where the power of God is flowing. It will flow to you there. 
I said it will get to you there. Uh, look at look at Mark chapter two, reading from verse three. This says a man that was so paralyzed that they had to carry him. It says, and they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And then in verse four it says, in verse four, and when they could not come near unto him for the praise because of the crowd, the multitude, they uncovered the roof where he was. They said, all we need to do is to get this man in front of Jesus. He might be paralyzed. He might be impotent. He might be helpless. He might be hopeless. Whatever his condition, just get him to the very presence of Christ. And when you get to the presence of Christ, something good must happen to you. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed when in the sick of the palsy lay. And they were told in verse 5, when he saw their faith, he says on the sick of the palsy, arise and pick, take, take up your bed. And he arose immediately, immediately. All he wants to do is to see your faith. And as he sees your faith, not even the faith of the man alone, he saw their faith. All those four people that carried him and they brought him to the presence of Jesus. He says, my faith, he sees your faith. And combined together, he sees our faith. Something must happen there. And something must happen at home. And something must happen to that sick child in Jesus' name. It says, thy sins be forgiven thee. He, he gave him salvation because the root of the problem, the root of the sickness is the sin. And it's like if you have in your house, for example, the water tap is running and running. And the water tap fills the ground. And the water is still running. And then you rush there and you take uh, something like a rag or cloth and you're mopping the floor. But the water is still running and you're mopping the floor and the water is still running. You will never stop mopping the floor because you didn't close the tab. The, the tab. It is when you close the tab first. The source of the water that fills the ground That then you can begin to mop the floor That's why Jesus, because he knew That the very source of the paralysis And the very source of the helplessness Is the running tap that he is the sinner. That's why he said, For son, thy sins be forgiven thee. After that, now, once we stop that tab, so that there'll be no continuation of the manifestation of the power of that sickness, the rest is easy. We mop the floor, everything is cleared away from your life. And so he says from verse 9, look at verse 9, as he says, Whether is it easier to say, to the sick of the palsy that sins be forgiven thee or to say arise and take up thy bed and walk then in verse 10 he say but that ye may know that the son of man has power on earth to forgive sins he says to the sick of the palsy look at verse 11 he says I say unto thee arise and take up thy bed and go thy way into thine house and then verse 12 gives us that word it says, And immediately he arose and he took up the bed and went forth before them all. If you had been kind of weak and hopeless, when the name of Jesus is called upon you, immediately strength will come, healing will come. Power will come. And before everyone that had been looking at you as if you are neither here on earth nor there in heaven, hanging between earth and heaven, all of a sudden, when the name of Jesus is breathed upon you, new life will come. New strength will come. And immediately, he arose and took up the bed and he went forth before them all in so much that they were all amazed and glorified God saying, we never saw it on this fashion. 
can't something happen in your life that you have never seen in this fashion? Can something happen to your wife? Something good, healing, power, strength happen to your wife? That is, you know, there you've been not seeing that sickness for a long time. Something to happen, you've never seen it in this fashion. Can something happen this year in your family, in your life? All these years you have been going on normally and regularly and we've been living our Christian lives, but we have all these challenges we've been carrying along with us like we're dragging you know, some wagons behind us all of a sudden this new year i said this new year i said this new year something will happen in your life you will say since i came into the kingdom i never saw it on this wise i pronounce it upon your life I prophesy it upon your life. I proclaim it upon your life in Jesus' name. Look at number two there. Look at number two there. It's personal humility of supplicating believers. Have you seen that centurion that came? He said, I am not worthy. He didn't say, Christ, come and heal my servant. You have to come. Because this is what I've done for the nation. This is what he said, I am not worthy that you should come into my house. When you come like that and you know that God owes you nothing. Salvation, he planned it by himself before you were born. Healing, he provided it before you became sick. Deliverance, he provided that before you paid any tithes at all in the church. He had provided everything. Calvary had taken place. Salvation had been provided. Healing had been provided. Before you gave any tithes or offering, it is not by marriage. It's the compassion of the Lord. We come personally humble in the sight of the Lord as we're making supplication as believers look at Mark chapter 7 reading from verse 27 Mark chapter 7 verse 27 and Jesus said unto her let the children first be filled for it is not meat it is not right it is not suitable to take the children's bread and to cast it to the dogs well the woman understood the language. The Lord was saying, like everybody else, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And you are like a dog. You do your sin public. You do it private. And you are unclean in the sight of God. Dogs were unclean in the sight of the Lord to the children of Israel. And God, what Christ was saying, it's not good to cast the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. Look at verse 28. Verse 28 says, And she answered and said, Yes, Lord, truth, Lord, I am what you say I am. Can I hide any secret from you that you will not hit? No. Can I hide my dirty life, defiled life, the doggish life, the life of the dog? Can I hide that from you? Yes, Lord. Yet the dogs under the table each of the children's crumbs. That's the humility when, when we come to the Lord. Nothing in my hand I bring. Simply to the cross I cling. Jesus that died on the cross of Calvary. I depend only on your mercy. I depend only on your substitutionary work. I depend only on the fact that by your stripes I am healed. That's the humility we need and the Lord will touch you. And the Lord will heal you. Look at verse 29. It says in verse 29, And he said unto her, For they say, Go thy way. The devil is gone out of thy daughter. Uh, did you see there that Jesus did not even 
pray. He did not look to heaven. He did not say, Father, this uh, woman's uh, daughter is being tormented by a powerful evil spirit, vexed and tormented. Father, I'm asking that you will deliver. No, because Jesus has power. And Jesus has authority. Authority above the devil. Authority above Satan. Authority above evil spirits. Authority above demons. And once Jesus said, go thy way, the devil is gone. It's gone. I said it's gone. It has to go. It has no choice. Once you mention the name of Jesus, the name above every name, that at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and all knees shall bend before the Lord. You mention that name and you don't look back, that demon has to go. Look at Bustachi. In Bustachi it says, And when she was come to her house, she found the devil gone out. When you get back home, you'll find the devil gone out. You'll find the oppressor gone out. You'll find the originator of oppression and disease. You'll find him gone out in Jesus' name. Out of your family. Out of your business. Out of your profession. Out of everything that concerns you. That power of darkness come out in jesus name look at isaiah isaiah chapter 57 we're looking at verse 15 for thus says the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity whose name is holy i dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit with him that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the heart and of the contrite ones. Look at verse 18. In verse 18, I have seen his ways. Because he's contrite and he's humble, I have seen his ways. I will heal him. He said, I will heal him. Anytime you have any challenge with a sickness or disease, and then you go before the Lord, you kneel down. That's a sign of humility. You say, Lord, that, that's a sign of humility. You say, Lord, what I cannot do, you can do. That's your sign of humility. And say, Lord, according to your word, not according to my works, not according to my marriage, not according to anything I've done, according to your word, send forth your power and heal me. I have seen his ways I will heal him and I will lead him also and restore comforts unto him and to his mourners the people who are mourning they think you are finished everything is finished for you and they have love for you but they cannot do anything and therefore they are mourning on your behalf you tell them don't cry for me anymore I am all right now. I said, I am all right now. You'll be all right every which hole in Jesus' name. We're coming to number three here. Number three here, the purposeful healing with sound body. Purposeful healing. Acts chapter 3, reading from verse 16, and his name, and through faith in his name, at they made this man stronger, whom ye now see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. That's the man that Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And the man stood up and he walked and he had perfect soundness in the presence of them all was the result of that look at chapter 4 verse 4 in chapter 4 verse 4 how be it many of them which heard the word believed and the number of the men was about 5,000 
the purpose of the healing is so that the power of God will be declared, revealed, shown to all the people. And as they saw that, and now Peter presented to them the gospel, the saving gospel, 5,000 people became converted. Look at chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 14. Acts chapter 5, verse 14. Believers were the more added to the Lord. Multitudes, both of men and women. Look at uh, verse 15 there. It says, it's so much that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. And then in verse 16, we're told, and there came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits. And what happened? They were healed everyone the result uh, the result of one got healed the other one got healed and they now knew that once the name of jesus is mentioned by the apostles that the healing will come then they went to bring everybody from everywhere and those great things happened we're told in acts chapter 9 verse 32 acts chapter 9 verse 32 and it came to pass as peter passed throughout all the quarters he came down also to the saints which were at lydia and then he says in verse 33 in verse 33 it says and there he found a certain man named Hermes, which had kept his bed eight years and was sick of the palsy and then in verse 34 in verse 34 peter said unto him and yes jesus christ make it the whole he didn't even go and touch him. He didn't even go and put some oil on his forehead. He just saw him. And then at a distance, power will flow. The anointing will flow. And then the rays of healing light flowed and shine, shone into the life of that man. He says, arise, take off thy bed. And he arose immediately. And that power has never failed and the strength will come to you power will come to you that thing that bends you down and bends you low and you couldn't try up when the name of jesus is mentioned weakness will vanish away from you all those things will go away in jesus name now look at the consequence of that look at the result of that the purpose why that healing took place verse 35 in verse 35 it says and all that dwelt at leader and sharon saw him the result they turned to the lord it will turn many people unto the Lord. And that's the purpose of the, look at verse 42 there. In verse 42, and it was known throughout all Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. That's the body getting healed, and tonight, because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, it will come upon your life. Yeah. Healing, yeah. health, yeah. vitality, yeah. vigor, strength if i were you i would say amen. amen point number two now we're looking at the soul the precious healing of the sorrowful soul look at psalm 107 reading from verse 18 their soul abhorreth all manner of meat and they draw near unto the gates of death the soul now this is the need of the soul that the soul is drooping the soul is weary the soul is tired and the soul is uh, completely down cast down and it says in verse 20 look at verse 20 there it says he sent his word and he healed them 
those people that have their souls drooping, cast down, discouraged, as if, you know, their soul cannot carry them anymore. He sent his word and killed them and delivered them from their destruction. He'll touch your spirit. He'll touch your soul. And every weakness, everything will vanish away in Jesus' name. Look at three things here. Number one, the heaviness in bitter situations. How the heart, the mind, the soul becomes heavy. The heaviness in bitter situations. Number two, the healing of body and souls. The healing of body and souls. Number three, the hackening of beseeching supplicants. These people who are making supplication and they're praying to the Lord and they hearken to the word of the Lord. And it is that hackening to the word of the Lord that brings solution to their problems. Look at number one. Number one, the heaviness in bitter situations. We're looking at Isaiah, sorry, at Nehemiah chapter 2, and we're looking at verse 2. Nehemiah chapter 2, we're looking at verse 2. It says, Wherefore the king said unto me, why is the countenance such seen thou art not sick, not sick in body? This is nothing else but sorrow of heart. And I was very then, I was very, I was very sore, afraid. He had the sorrow and the body in the heart. Look at Psalm 119 verse 28. Psalm 119 verse 28. My soul melted for heaviness. Strengthen thou me according to thy word. When you heard some bad news, some news you cannot digest, some news that makes your a tummy to turn immediately. Some news that makes you to want to go to the toilet immediately purging because of that bad news. My soul melted for heaviness. And then look at Isaiah chapter 61. We're reading from verse 3. It says to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give unto them beauty for ashes the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Sometimes situations happen that make a person heavy that they might be called the trees of righteousness and the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. In Philippians chapter 2, reading from verse 26, Philippians chapter 2, verse 26, for he longed after you all and was full of heaviness because that she have heard that he had been sick. He had been sick. The heaviness produced healing because the soul was not all right and the soul was heavy and the soul was sorrowful, the body became sick. The heaviness in bitter situations. Let's look at number two there. Number two is the healing of body and souls. The healing of of body in souls in some 60 verses 2 and 3 some 60 verse 2 thou hast made the earth to tremble thou hast broken it heal the breaches thereof heal the breaches thereof for it shaketh when some things happen it shakes your life shakes your personality your feet cannot even carry you anymore and your hands are weak because of the condition of your soul the breach is there and the healing now is not just for the body it's because of the condition of the soul heal the breaches thereof look at some six verse two in some six reading from verse two have mercy upon me O lord i am weak O lord heal me for my bones are vexed look at verse three there in verse three it says my soul is also so vexed but thou O lord 
How long? The soul, it was a problem of the soul. And because of that problem of the soul, the weariness of the soul and the heaviness of the soul and the sorrow in the soul, he could not do anything. And he said, Lord, how long? It's like I'm dying from the inside. Heal me and change this condition. Look at Psalm 30, reading from verse 2. In Psalm 30, verse 2, Lord, my God. God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. Look at verse 3 there. In verse 3, it says, O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. You see the problem of the soul now, and the soul still needs the touch of the Lord, a touch of heaven, a touch of the anointing of the Lord. Thou hast kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit, look at verse 11 there. In verse 11 it says, Thou hast turned for me my mourning into dancing. Thou hast put off my sackcloth and guarded me with gladness. Look at Psalm 41 verse 3. In Psalm 41 verse 3, the Lord will strengthen him upon his bed of languishing. Thou wilt make all his bed in his sickness. Look at verse 4. In verse 4 it says, I said, Lord, be merciful unto me. Heal my soul. There is healing for the body. There's also healing for the soul. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against thee. Look at number three here, point number three here. The hackney of beseeching supplicants. We come to the Lord and we beseech him and we're asking him, Oh Lord, do this and do that. There's one condition. We hack in to the word and the voice of the Lord. Look at Exodus chapter 15, verse 26, and said, if thou will diligently hack him, if thou will diligently hack him, there's no sickness, there's no infirmity, either for the body or for the soul or for the spirit, the condition of total healing and total strength and total recovery and perfect soundness is that you will diligently hack him. If thou will diligently hack him to the voice of the Lord thy God and will do that which is right in his sight and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee. I thought somebody would shout, Amen. Amen. Holiness prevents sickness. A good life, an obedient life prevents sickness and damage to our spirit damage to our soul and damage to our body. He said, I will put none of these diseases upon thee which I have brought upon the Egyptians for I am not I was, I am not I will be in the millennium now at this very time, at the time of need, at the time of prayer, at the time when you have hacked unto his word and you bring his word before him and you're obedient to his word. If there's anything to repent of, you repent of those sins and then you come according to his word. He says, I am the Lord that he let thee. I am the Lord that he let thee. I am the Lord that healeth thee. He cannot lie. It's not a man that he should lie. Not the son of man that he should turn, that he should repent. As he said, and shall he not do it? As he spoke in, and shall he not bring it to pass? It will come to pass in your life. I said it will come to pass in your life. I am the Lord that he lets thee. You are healed in Jesus' name. Look at Psalm 81, verse 13. Psalm 81, verse 13. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me. Israel, that Israel had walked in my ways. Look at verse 16. In verse 16, it says, it should have fetched them also with the finest of the wheat and with honey out of the rock. Are you ready? 
honey out of the rock. I said, are you ready? What they got was water out of the rock. And they thought they'd got everything they will ever get. But God said, if they have only hearkened unto me, I will go beyond giving them water out of the rock. I will give them honey out of the rock. Why not this year? A new year. But it's time of a new year to come upon your life. And for you to, beyond everything you had got, what in the rock that God will grant you? Will grant your family? Will grant everyone around you? Honey, out of the rock, should I have satisfied me? It is coming. On you, it is coming. You will get in Jesus' name. Look at Isaiah chapter 58, and I'm reading just verse 8 there. Isaiah 58, verse 8, Then thy light shall break forth as the morning. The night will pass away. The night of crying, the night of affliction, everything will pass away. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health, where are you there? And thine health shall spring forth speedily. And thy righteousness shall go before thee. And the glory of the Lord shall be thy rear word. We're coming to point number three. Point number three is the priceless healing of smitten spirits. It says in Psalm 142 verse 3. Look at this. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then thou knewest my path in the way wherein I walked. Have I privily laid, they are privily laid, is near for me. He said, my spirit was dealt with the body, was dealt with the soul. Now we come to the body. He said, my spirit was overwhelmed within me. Look at verse 4 there. In verse 4, when I looked on the right hand and beheld, but there was no man that would know me. And refuge failed me. No man cared for my soul. Then in verse 5, he tells us there in verse 5, I cried unto thee. And then it says, as I cried unto the Lord, O Lord, I said, thou art my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. Look at verse 6. In verse 6 it says, Attend unto my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are stronger than I. That's why the spirit was subdued. The spirit was subjected, the spirit was smitten, the spirit was overwhelmed. And then in verse 7, it says in verse 7, Bring my soul out of prison, that I may praise thy name. The righteous shall compass me about, for thou shalt deal bountifully with me. The Lord will deal bountifully with you. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9. 2 Corinthians 1, verse 9. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raises the dead. The spirit had been affected, the soul had been affected. It was going to affect the body now. But look at verse 10. It says verse in verse 10, who delivered us from so great a death and does deliver and in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. He will yet deliver you. Don't give up. He will yet deliver you. Sing when your trials are greatest. Never give up. It will come to your age. The priceless healing for smitten spirits. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the healing of broken, bleeding seekers. Number two, the holiness of bold, 
beatitude says. Number three, the health for built up, blameless servants. Seekers, that's who you are. Saints, that's who you are. Servants, that's who you are. Threefold, you are delivered. Look at number one. Number one is the healing of broken, bleeding seekers. Look at Luke chapter 4, reading from verse 18. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach, proclaim, declare the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted. It's not only the people who are physically sick, the people whose hearts are broken. An event has happened. A situation has arisen. Something has crushed them in their inner man. And Jesus said, the Father God in heaven has sent him to heal the broken hearted and to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind and to set at liberty. To set at liberty. Every chain that binds you to set you at liberty. Everything that wants to stop your journey halfway to set at liberty. Everything that is pushing you back, pushing you back. No progress, no progress. And they want to bind your hand and bind your feet and just dump you there until all the vision you had, all the ideal you have, all the destination you wanted to reach, they say now, they are bound his hand, they are bound his leg, but now Christ has come to set you at liberty. All those who are bruised, that liberty and that deliverance will come to you today in Jesus' name. Broken hearted, broken hearted. The Lord heals the broken hearted. I want you to look at um, uh, Psalm 147, verse 3. In Psalm 147, verse 3, He heals the broken in heart. Is your heart broken uh, about something, an issue, a situation? Something has happened and you don't have your heart full and complete and strength strengthened anymore. You're broken hearted. And at, at a very small a thing that anybody says you start weeping uncontrollably the Lord has come to set you free he understands he will heal your broken heart he will mend your broken heart it will comfort your broken heart you will still be all right the strength of yesteryears will come back to your life. And the joy and the spring under your feet that you move and now you've forgotten all the water that has gone under the bridge. The Lord has come to do that for you tonight in Jesus' name. He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. He'll bind up the wounds of your life in Jesus' name. Look at number two there. Number two there is the holiness of bold beatitude saints. The people who live by the beatitude, they know that God is up there. Therefore, blessed are the poor in spirit because theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are they that mourn and they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek. They go into inherit the earth and blessed are those who thirst and hunger after righteousness for they shall be filled. And blessed are the merciful. They go in to receive mercy and blessed are the the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, because they shall be called the children of God. You live by the principles and the precepts of the beatitudes, the Lord will take care of your life. It tells us, look at 2 Kings chapter, chapter 20, and we're reading from verse 1. 2 Kings chapter 20, reading from verse 1. In those days was Ezekiah, seek unto death, seek unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus says the Lord, set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. This was not a dream. There are people, once they see something, they dream, 
they collapse. There are people, once a prophet comes to them and tells them something, they collapse, they are gone. There are people, once a prayer partner said, I had a dream and this is what I saw, and I'm very clear it is you, they are gone. But now, I see how the prophet came and he told Ezekiah, he said, Ezekiah, I'm coming from the presence of the Lord. Set your house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Did Ezekiah said, okay, if it has to be so, then it is so. I know you are a great prophet, and I know that you would have prayed, and maybe you cannot reverse it. That's why you came like that. That means I'm gone. And then he begins to send texts to all his friends. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. Did Ezekiah do it like that? Why are you doing like that? Where did you get your example that somebody said something you know, and then you already saying, I'm packing my load or pack the load. Nothing will happen to you. Look at verse 2 there. In verse 2 there it says, and he turned, then he turned his face to the wall and he prayed unto the Lord saying, look at verse 3. It says there in verse 3, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and in, with a perfect heart, that's the holiness there, and I've done that which is good in thy sight. And Ezekiah wept so. Look at verse 4. It says in verse 4, and it came to pass on you, it will come to pass. And for Isaiah was gone out into the middle court that the word of the Lord came to him. The Lord will reverse every negative prophecy in your life. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, turn again and tell Ezekiah, the captain of my people. Thus says the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer. Where are you? I have heard thy prayer. Wipe the tears away. I have heard thy prayer. Take the body in away. I have heard thy prayer. And then he says, I have seen thy tears. What tears were that? The tears of, if I go now, I have that project. If I go now, I have that vision. If I go now, I have that thing I set my heart to, that he began to cry. Will I not do that and do that and do that, which God has ordained for my life? And the Lord said, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. Behold, I will heal thee. And then it says, on the third day, thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord. On the third day, let's say for example today, Tuesday, the Lord talking to Ezekiah. And it says, on the third day, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you'll be there for power night. Yeah. Nothing will destroy you. Yeah. And nothing will cut short your life in Jesus' name. Well, you know the story, but the story is now transferring into your life. It'll add unto you many more years in Jesus' name. For him, for him, it was 15 years. Maybe for you it will be 30 years added. Who knows? Maybe for you 20 years added. There'll be an addition in your life. An addition in my life. An addition in my life. The Lord will do it in Jesus' name. Let's look at number three there. Number three there, the hells of built up blameless servants. In third John, only one chapter, third John chapter one, verse two, it says, Behold, I wish above all things, above everything we have said today, above everything you have known before, above every other thing in your life, I wish, I pray, above all things, that thou mayest prosper. That thou mayest prosper. Are you not waiting for his prosperity that thou mayest prosper and be in health 
and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. You've got salvation, you've got um, sanctification, and then you've got the strength of the Lord in your life. Your body must follow on. If we have three parts, the spirit, the soul, and the body, the spirit is all right, and the soul is all right, your body must follow on. Where are you? I said, where are you? I can't see you if you don't stand up. I said, where are you? Your body must follow on. Healing for your body. Health for your body. Strength for your body. Power in your life in Jesus' name. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. The Lord has spoken to you. And the Lord has declared that this is what you have. You have healing. You have health. You have perfect soundness for your spirit, for your soul, and for your body. And it's available. It's available. Whosoever, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be healed. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall have dominion. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be strengthened. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be lifted up. Call on him. Call on him. Call on him and tell him, oh Lord, here I am. Oh Lord, here I am. All your prophecies, all your proclamations, and all the promises, they are mine. They are mine. They are mine. They are yours. As you call on the name of the Lord and you say, Lord, I have heard. Lord, I have heard. Lord, I have heard. They belong to me. They belong to you. Those promises, they are yours. All the promises of God in Christ, they are yea and amen. They are yes and amen. They are yes and amen. There must be joy, the joy of fulfillment in your life and the joy of the power of the Lord in your life. Call upon him. Those promises must not fall to the ground. The proclamations must not fall to the ground. They must be fulfilled in your life. They must be fulfilled in your life. Hacking to the word of the Lord. Believe the word of the Lord. Embrace the word of the Lord and take in the word of the Lord and be obedient to the word of the Lord. They are yours. They are yours. Healing for your body. Healing for your body. Healing for your body that the Lord will take away everything that brings sickness, everything that brings decay, everything that brings disease, taking away from your body. That's what he said. That's what he said. Even outsiders came. The centurion outsider, the mother of the demon tormented girl outsider, the leper outsider, all those outsiders came and the Lord answered them. And you an insider, a man, a woman in the kingdom, a child of God, a child of the kingdom. They came from outside and they were answered. They came from outside and they were delivered. And the Lord now, after he saved you, and he brought you into the kingdom, and he said, all the promises of the king, for kingdom kids, for kingdom children, all the promises, they belong to you. Why don't you stand on them? Why don't you claim them? Why don't you accept them? Welcome them into your life and say, Lord, here I am. They belong to me. Remember, even Isaiah the prophet told Ezekiel, set your house in order, for thou shalt surely die and not live. And Ezekiel turned away from that negative prophecy and he turned to the Lord. And he had confidence in the Lord. 
trust in the Lord and faith in the Lord. And the Lord honored his faith. And the Lord said, I have heard your prayer. He'll hear your prayer. He'll hear your prayer. I've seen your tears. He saw the tears. He's seen that. He said, I will heal thee. I will heal thee. That private sickness, I will heal thee. That hidden thing you are battling with, I will heal thee. He will heal you. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. All those promises of God for your body, for your soul, for your spirit, they are yea and amen in Christ. They are yes and amen in Christ. Tell him, tell him, tell him. Tell him in faith. Tell him trusting. Tell him believing. Tell him accepting that it is yours and it will be fulfilled in your life. Your soul, is your soul overwhelmed? Is your soul bodied? Are there bitter situations that have taken place in your life, in your family, in your surrounding? And because of that, your soul is cast down. Why? Are you cast down? Oh, my soul, trust in the Lord. I will yet trust in the Lord. And the Lord himself will reverse everything negative in your family, negative in your situation, negative in your life. He cannot fail. God is not a man that is your fail, that is your lie. He's not a son of man that is your repent and turn. As he said, and shall he not do it? As he spoken, shall he not bring it to pass? He'll bring it to pass. Morning will vanish away. Joy will come. And the joy of the Lord will be the strength of your life. Believe, and it's done. Accept and it's done. Hold on to the promise and the hand that cannot fail. It must be done. Healing for your body. Healing for your soul. Healing for your body. Healing for every member of your family, health, strength, vitality in your life, perfect soundness, perfect soundness that the Lord gives and the Lord has brought to you today. And as you believe, it's confirmed in your life. As you believe, it is confirmed in your life. And now you go back home and you discover the devil is gone out. The work is done. And all those works of the devil, they're destroyed. Free. Free. And free indeed. And that provision will flow unto you. His prosperity will flow into your life. His goodness will flow into your life. And every need of your life will be met even from this hour, from this moment. Let him open the floodgates, the windows of heaven the gates of heaven, the doors of heaven, and shower 
I shower and pour upon your life. Receive. 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 In your life. In your family. In your profession. In the work of your hand. It is done in Jesus' name. I have received. I have received. My life is different now. Every good promise of God is fulfilled in my life. Heaven says amen concerning you. I can see you, but I'm just asking, but I see you there. Where are you now? You are not where you used to be. You are not what you used to be. The body that came and you were dragging it and, you know, it was like almost helpless and hopeless. New strength has come. New power has come. And as I'm going back home, you are going back home like a giant in the faith. A conqueror in every situation. Father, in Jesus' name. We thank you for your promise. We thank you for proclamation. We thank you for the prophecy. And we know it is fulfilled in every life in Jesus' name. Healing for everyone. Deliverance for everyone. Power for everyone. Dominion for everyone. Answer to every prayer in Jesus' name. Every sickness, every infirmity, every disease in your body, anywhere in your body, I command, come out in Jesus' name. And I pray the miracle of healing will flow into your family. Your husband, your wife, your children, your dad, your mom, all the sorrow in the spirit, all the overwhelming situation in their soul be gone in Jesus' name. New life, vitality, and strength, soundness, and joy in the Lord come upon everyone tonight in Jesus' name. Lord, let no one go back home the way they came. As we are going back, clear the way for everyone. As we are going back, let there be light in the path of everyone. As we are going back, your healing, your health, your deliverance, your dominion, your provision, your prosperity, your breakthrough for everyone in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It is done. In Jesus' name we pray.